Well everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and talk about the iPhone 7 and see how this phone holds up in 2023. Now I will definitely tell you this phone is kind of in a sad state. I think this phone was a pretty impactful phone, both for the better and for the worse. But I do think in this day and age, it's probably time to move on and potentially not purchase this phone anymore. But if you already use this phone, you may just want to continue using it and I'll explain it throughout this video. If you want to pick up some phones I would recommend this year, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the outside of the iPhone 7, this device had a 4.7 inch Retina IPS panel on the front. Now it's not a bad panel, it's not an OLED like we have nowadays, but when compared to even like an iPhone 14, this phone is very very small in my opinion, but it could be the perfect size for a lot of people. It has a pretty big amount of bezel on the top and the bottom. You have that home button on the front with Touch ID 2. But a big thing to kind of keep in mind here, which is something I always think about, is that Apple is continuing to sell the iPhone SE 3, and that phone has a very outdated body. And the fact that Apple is still selling that, which looks pretty much almost identically to the iPhone 7, makes me think that this phone or people who own this phone probably feel like they still have a fairly modern device. So that's kind of one thing to keep in mind. The internals are a completely different story, but the exterior, I mean, you could say you have an iPhone that looks almost like a brand new iPhone in a way. So you have a lightning port at the bottom, which is nice. You have the aluminum side, you have the aluminum back as well, which feels pretty good. You do have that single camera setup on the back as well, which is, you know, decent in this day and age for how old this phone is. Now, some key things to take away on the outside for one, no headphone jack. This was the first iPhone to actually remove the headphone jack, and that was a pretty big deal for a lot of people, including myself. I didn't want to upgrade from my iPhone 6 Plus to an iPhone 7 Plus at the time because of the lack of the headphone jack, but I ended up getting kind of used to it, and it kind of really wasn't that big of a deal after I switched, and nowadays people kind of forget that this iPhone was kind of the first one to originate it. This iPhone was also one of the last iPhones to not have wireless charging anymore. The iPhone you know, 8, 8 Plus and iPhone 10 ended up bringing that, so this iPhone does not have any wireless charging. It also was the first iPhone to bring IP certification as well. That's kind of another big thing going for this device that you had that type of capability at that time for this device. So it had a lot of lasts, it had a lot of firsts as well, which is pretty cool. So from that standpoint, kind of impactful for sure. Now, this, I guess we have to go ahead on the camera now, which is not a bad camera for how old this phone is, but it's not a good camera anymore. You have a single 12 megapixel wide angle lens on the back, and you have a 7 megapixel front facing camera. Now, on top of it, you know, of the many last, this was also the last iPhone to not have 4K at 60. This was the first iPhone or the one of the last ones to bring 4K at 30 as the top tier resolution you could film in with the frames per second. Now, this now this phone also didn't have a telephoto or ultra wide camera, just had that standard wide angle lens, which isn't I guess a problem, again, when you think about it, the iPhone SE 3, for example, doesn't have any of those lenses either, but, you know, that iPhone isn't really in that good of a situation, you know, either. With that front camera, though, I would say it was a pretty good upgrade. You know, you had 1080p on the front, and I will say in this day and age, it's definitely not a great camera. It's probably going to make a lot of people a little bit upset because it's not as good as maybe you would imagine. You don't have portrait mode. You don't have cinematic mode, no stabilization mode, no crazy features. You basically just have a, you know, straight up, you know, standard camera. The way I see it is if you're good at editing photos and videos, then maybe this will be okay, but you're also going to be diminishing your audio quality because the camera's, you know, microphone's not going to be that great either. So there's a lot of things that kind of go around that camera quality. If you're, you know, again, taking standard photos for either Instagram or Snapchat or any of those applications, a good thing to keep in mind is those apps are fairly optimized for iPhones, but they're still not going to be as great if you even had like an iPhone XS, for example. So those are some kind of, you know, things to keep in mind at the end of the day. It's not a bad camera, you know, for how old this phone is, but it is kind of a data camera when it comes down to it nowadays. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Now in the software and the longevity portion of this iPhone, this is one of the sadder aspects of this device. And it's honestly the one area where I look at this phone and I'm kind of surprised at because this iPhone ended up getting discontinued in 2022 with software support. It did not get iOS 16. And personally, I feel like this phone could have easily supported it. I feel like this one still had a lot of capability behind it, had a lot of power behind it as well, and Apple pretty much just went through and I guess axed it. And I don't feel like they should have done that. I feel like, like I said before, this iPhone could have easily gotten the next few versions of software, and for it ending the same time as the iPhone success made me feel somewhat upset. I feel like this phone again could have easily supported the next version of software, so it's pretty much outdated. However, it's not severely outdated where it's like unusable. It's not like it's in the situation of the iPhone 6. 
So because of that, if you still use an iPhone 7, I wouldn't be completely against you using it for a little bit longer if you're waiting for another upgrade, or even if you're waiting for the iPhone 15, like you could wait and be kind of okay with it. But the only issue I have with it is if you're actually waiting through and, you know, trying to purchase an iPhone 7 right now to actively use, you might not want to do that. The iPhone 7 is kind of outdated when it comes down to that. And I would recommend buying a phone that's still supported like an iPhone 8, for example. So, and the software and longevity portion that kind of covers it up there as well. Now on the performance side, this device, as I mentioned before, it has that Apple A10 Fusion chip inside of it with two gigabytes of RAM. Now this was also an iPhone with, you know, the Apple A10 Fusion chip, which was inside a lot of different products, including iPad Pros, iPod Touches, I think some other products as well. And Apple decided to still discontinue it, which was very strange. Now, in my opinion, this iPhone, from the performance side, it's not really a great performing iPhone anymore. I mean, the first thing to keep in mind is there's no gesture-based design, so you have to continuously click that home button, which can cause some delay. And whenever I compare this iPhone to any of the more recent iPhones, even like an iPhone SE 3, there is noticeable delay when clicking the home button. So you can play a game and it can feel very fast, but when you click the home button to go back home or shut your phone off, well, it's going to, you know, cause some delay here and there, which can be a little annoying. Now, on top of that, I do think for other things, like if you're playing decent games, a lot of games nowadays have different graphic profiles you can change. So you can play Genshin Impact at fairly decent frames without, a, you know, it'll drop still here and there, but you can play it and you lower the graphics and you can be probably okay. It's only if you're trying to play very, very heavy intensive games, you're going to be getting into some massive glitches. There's also some overheating going on with this phone all the time. But I will say, whenever I've compared this iPhone to any of the latest iPhones, like the iPhone 14s and iPhone 13s, of course the iPhones are you know, going to be better, but I've noticed the biggest delays, at least personally, when I'm clicking the home button and when I'm not able to go down that direction. So from that standpoint, that's kind of how I cover it up in the performance segment right there. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up in that standpoint. Now in the battery life department, this is kind of another area which is kind of like a little different. You have a 1,960 million power battery there. Not a bad battery. And when it first came out, it was actually, I think, one of the bigger size batteries of any, you know, 4.7 inch iPhone at that point. But as I mentioned before, this iPhone has degraded like crazy. All of my iPhones, I have like four different iPhone 7s, and all of those battery lives are like less than 80% on all of them. So it's definitely not going to be that great, but it's expected when you have like a, you know, very old phone like this one. I think this phone is approaching seven years old this year. So of course it's not going to be that great, and you're going to be running into issues there. So overall, what I'll definitely tell you is the iPhone 7 sits in a very weird spot. I feel like this iPhone ended up getting iOS 16, I feel like it'd be a different story. But the fact that this iPhone is now unsupported with software, it's fairly outdated in the body standpoint as well. It, there's really not a big reason to go and pick it up. Some other iPhones I would recommend though, at the very least an iPhone 8 or iPhone 10. If you're able to pick up those iPhones, those are the lowest ones I would recommend buying right now in 2023. The iPhone 10 R would be better and iPhone 11 Pro would be almost perfect for a lot of people out there. But if you have all the money, go for the iPhone 14s. So that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button on me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.